this off with, um, I'm gonna introduce our mayor, who needs no introduction, but we're here today to talk about our city's efforts to really curb and reduce the amount of retail theft in San Francisco. So without further ado, uh, Mayor Breed. Thank you, Chief, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, we know, sadly, um, that this pandemic has been very challenging for our city, for our country, and what we've seen in terms of theft and burglaries has been really definitely frustrating. Um, the videos that have gone viral um, don't necessarily tell the full story about what's happening in San Francisco. Yes, what we saw was very problematic, but what we haven't seen was the good work that has been done by the men and women of the San Francisco Police Department to apprehend many suspects in many of these cases. We know that what happens with these particular crimes is not just about stealing merchandise and thinking that, okay, these are large companies and they can recover. Um, they can deal with loss prevention and, and recuperate their expenses through insurance. It's not about that. It's about the fact that when these stores decide they don't want to do business in this city and they close, people lose their jobs. When the pharmacies decide we're going to close in this neighborhood because we have too many challenges with theft, the seniors and folks who depend on the medications of those pharmacies, they lose, the community loses. What community doesn't want a pharmacy in their neighborhood? What community doesn't want a grocery store in their neighborhood? What community doesn't want resources that they can access that are easy to get to? And when we rob these places that serve our community, we're taking away this resource from the people that we care about, from our mothers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our family members who are in need. The people who work at these establishments, when they lose their jobs, what do they do? We are better than this. And what I will also say, sadly, in many of these organized theft rings, a lot of young people. Parents, what's going on with your kids? In some cases, these kids are under the age of 18. Under the age of 18. We are better than this and we can do better than this. Here in San Francisco, we're a compassionate city. We care about criminal justice reform. We care about second chances. We care about making sure that people are not wrongly accused. But don't take our kindness for weakness, our compassion for weakness. When a crime is committed in this city, when you cross that line, there will be consequences. There has to be consequences because we can't continue to allow what we see as lawlessness continue to dominate our city and the domino effect of closures, of people feeling unsafe, it's frustrating, and we are tired of it. This city has invested significant resources into job training and placement program, small business initiatives, resources around education, stipends for training programs, and all types of things. And the fact that we still have people who are committing these acts are problematic. So for those of you in these organized rings, our goal is to make sure with our plans that we have sufficient resources dedicated specifically to investigate, to apprehend, and to make sure that we gather the appropriate evidence for a conviction for these crimes. So as a result of the work that we've been doing here in San Francisco, a couple of things that we're gonna be doing and the chief can talk a little bit more specifically about them. 
We will expand San Francisco Police Department's organized retail crime unit from two to six full-time officers. This will be their sole job is to deal with these retail thefts. We will expand our San Francisco Community Ambassador Program consisting of retired police officers. Originally, I created this program for Union Square for the need to make sure that people who are shopping and visiting Union Square felt safe, especially during the holiday season. We are expanding that program to bring back from, we, we have eight people who are part of that program now. We're gonna increase that program to 25. And those retired officers who consist of people who have done investigations and other work for the San Francisco Police Department throughout their careers will be of significant service to help with this program. We plan to hire a new, a new strategic coordinator and deployment of off-duty police officers. There'll be a lieutenant who's responsible in the department for those who serve in 12B. And many of you know 12B are officers who are able to be hired by uh, private businesses um, to work during the times that they're off duty. We now will have a change in how we deploy those officers to the most heavily needed retail establishments. Many of those places like the Walgreens and the Targets and you know the large uh, retailers that have been targeted in many of these cases, we will make changes to the deployment in the hardest hit areas. And our goal is also to expand the rapid reporting and response to our uh, teleserve unit. And that is so that people who need to report a crime, they have an easier way to do it online and making a phone call rather than waiting hours for a police officer, officer to show up. Because what we don't want people to do is to not report these crimes. We want to know what's going on in this city. We want to know what's happening, whether you have a video or not. We want these crimes reported so we can make adjustments in the areas that we target to address theft throughout San Francisco in our retail establishments. So our goal is to expand it um, and to make sure that the resources are available so that we can respond quickly. Um, I, I just want to give one example of the San Francisco Police Department and the work that they've done to address some of the, um, the uh, uh, theft and the vandalism in some cases of some businesses in Chinatown. There were about 49 reported incidents of vandalism, um, and of those 49 reported incidents, there were 30 that were committed by one person who was apprehended and is behind bars as we speak. Um, many, many of you saw the video that went viral of the guy driving into, riding in his bike and into the Walgreens. That went viral. Everyone talked about it, but nobody talked about the fact that that suspect has been apprehended and is awaiting prosecution as we speak. So the work gets done by this the police department. The investigations get done. The arrests get made, and we're adding more services to ensure that we continue to do the work for the people of San Francisco to make sure that people in communities who want these pharmacies and businesses in their communities are able to keep them, folks are able to keep their jobs, and we're able to serve San Francisco, and that we as a city, through our law enforcement agency, will respond when that line is crossed and those crimes are committed. So with that, I want to introduce uh, our chief, Bill Scott, who could talk more about the program and answer any questions. Thank you, Mayor Breed. So as the mayor said, we are, we've been challenged. And these retail theft crimes, they, they impact us all. Um, you don't have to be a direct victim to be impacted by this. If you go into your favorite retailer, whether it's a community business or a large national brand retailer, your experience is important. And if you shop in the city, if you live in the city, if you work in the city, if you play in the city, your experience is important. It's important to this mayor, it's important to us, and it's important to the people that we talk to. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail of how we're gonna make things better, how we intend to make things better. As the mayor said, you know, we first of all had to sit down and really make a plan to rise to this occasion because it is challenging. And when these 
things happen and they get captured on cell phone video, they do go viral. And then it makes it even worse because people then start fearing crime, even if they haven't been victimized. And we have to address that as well. This is where the, the increased presence, the, the, the better and tighter controls and management of our privately funded 10B officers, the off-duty officers working in uniform, really becomes important. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. And after I speak, we'll make ourselves available for questions. We have Deputy Chief David Lazar and Lieutenant Scott Ryan, who helped devise a lot of the plans that the mayor has directed. And we will be here to answer any further questions that you have. So a little bit of details about how we have arrived to this point. First of all, let me say thank you to all of our partners, the retailers associations, all the retailers that we sat down and not only had discussions with, but we listened to. We heard them. Um, they are a part of this solution as well, and better communications, better investigative processes from the time a crime is committed, better collection of evidence is something that we believe that we all should share the responsibility to make better. And so that is very well in progress. In terms of our investigations unit, and that's headed by Lieutenant Scott Ryan, again, sitting down with the investigators doing the work and listening to what they have to say and hearing them. One of the things that they told me when I sat down with them and Lieutenant Ryan was, Chief, we, we, we're, we're working as hard as we can work. We need more resources. And we had to recalibrate and give them more resources. And as the mayor mentioned, to increase that unit from two to six investigators, uh, it will do wonders because we have more capacity to investigate these cases. And we have some really good investigations going. And we expect really good outcomes in terms of arrest from these investigations that we have ongoing. So that is a big step forward. The other thing that I want to go into detail is the privately funded officers in uniform, the mayor referred to this earlier, uh, we had to do a better job in coordinating the scheduling of those, making sure that that aligned with the needs of this city. And what I mean specifically by that, we have hot spots in retail theft. We see uh, organized groups go in, take a bunch of property, run out, and a lot of times these things are captured on video. Now, we can't be totally driven by that, but we have to be data driven. And we felt that we can do a better job of really analyzing our data, getting data from the retailers that some data that we weren't getting before, and making sure we know where things are happening. We understand where these problems are occurring. But here, here's one thing that we know. Um, these crimes are underreported. And in our discussions with many of our retailers, even some of the community, you know, the mom and pop type of businesses, um, they're not always reporting the crimes. So one of the things that the mayor mentioned in terms of our reporting processes, we've implemented new processes to make it easier to report. Now, there's a, a plus side to that, many plus sides to that, but we expect you're going to see an increase with better reporting. And that's not a bad thing because it, it gives us an opportunity to have, number one, good data to begin with. Secondly, to know where to put our resources because we don't know what we don't know. And we encourage everybody to report these crimes when they happen so we know where to put our resources and we can work together on that. So we do expect an increase because of this better reporting. The systems are in place already. Uh, new online reporting in about three weeks will come online to e enhance that. And we expect to have better data. The other thing is what we do with that data is these increase of resources that I'm talking about and the mayor has mentioned. We put them in the right places. So the off-duty, the, the retired officers that we're bringing back to work in these, in these locations, we've seen tremendous success with what they bring to the table in Union Square. As the mayor said, we started this um, holiday season last year. Tremendous uh, support and, and um, praise from our retailers in that area, as well as our community members who benefit from these folks being out there. They know the city, they worked in the city for years, many of them grew up in our city, and not only are they a better conduit for communications, and what I mean by that is they have police radios. When they see something and they've been trained to know what they're looking at, they call our on-duty resources to get there before what they see becomes a problem. That is critically important, and that's a value added to this whole process. So that's what they'll be doing, we'll expand that. 
as mentioned, from eight to 24, 24 uh, members. And that's huge because it expands our geographic reach across the city so we, we'll, be, uh, we'll be beyond Union Square. And that's a big step forward. The 10B coordination. Another thing, coordination of communication and getting the information to the people that it needs to get to. We have officers day in and day out who work in uniform and they are hired privately by businesses and they are, security, for security purposes, they're in stores. You go to a lot of our, our retailers across the city, you'll see officers in uniform. So one of the things, as we sat down and talk with everybody who has a stake in this, we had to have better coordination with what we're doing with those resources and the flow of information. Lieutenant Ryan's uh, investigators, they need to know what these officers are seeing day in and day out. And we felt we can do better there, and we are doing better. That lieutenant that uh, the mayor mentioned has already been hired. He's already in place, along with the sergeant. They're already on board. And we've seen better deployment almost immediately with those two adjustments, almost immediately. At, the retailers who need it the help the most. And that's big, it's really huge. The other thing is these officers typically work in these stores quite often. They know the customers, they know the people, and better communications with the retailers on people who are chronic offenders, um, who have stay away orders, who are not supposed to be in the stores in the first place. We have to enforce that. You know, a judge has given a lot of these folks who go in and steal property in order not to be in those stores. And if the retailers don't know who they are because communications maybe hasn't been what it should have been, um, how do they know to tell the officers that person can't be in the store? So we know we can get better there and that's happening and it's in place. So these are things that we believe not only will help prevent some of what's happening, but it'll give us the tools to enforce the law. Um, the last thing I'll mention is just on the, the, the whole investigation piece. We have to have good outcomes. A lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of coordination has been poured into making this better. And we, the police department, have to give our prosecutors the best evidence possible. We're asking for assistance with retailers. Uh, when we have forensic evidence that we have to make sure that we get our forensics folks out there to collect that evidence. But if we don't know about it, we can't do that. This is why it's so important to report. This is why it's so important to communicate. And I'm, I'm encouraged by what we have seen this last month. Um, the mayor gave very clear direction on what she expects and what needs to happen. We're bought into that and we agree with that and we're being a part of that conversation from the start but I'm encouraged by the direction that it's going. And what I expect is better outcomes. I expect people to be held accountable. Uh, we're not gonna arrest everybody, although we'd like to, but we're not gonna catch everybody, but just know that you don't get a free pass when you come to this city and commit those types of crimes. Please know that. People will be held accountable. They will be prosecuted. We're gonna do our jobs and we're gonna get better at it until we make this situation better. And I'm encouraged by that and I believe we can do that. So in closing, I just want to recap a couple of things. Everybody's impacted by this, whether you've been a direct victim of a crime or whether you've gone in a store and witnessed somebody running out past you with an arm full of property. Um, everybody's impacted by this. Retailers have had to make adjustments, and I don't speak for the retailers, but I speak with them. They've had to make adjustments, locking up their merchandise, particularly merchandise that's frequently stolen. And, and, and that impacts our experiences as well. So we have to do a better job. We're committed to doing a better job um, and things will get better. So with that, um, I will open it up for questions and then we'll have Lieutenant uh, Ryan and Deputy Chief Cesar available as well. Hey, Chief Scott, thank you. Um, I know you said you expect some of the reporting to increase, so we might see the numbers go up of reported thefts. When do you actually expect to see an impact in terms of these thefts going down in numbers and more people arrested and these crime rings sort of brought, brought at bay? Well, if we get better reporting, we expect it to go up, and then we'll have a comparison point. Collecting better data, like really being able to parse out how many of our theft cases are actually retail theft, 
Right now, it's just difficult for us. I can tell you what our overall thefts, and I can tell you what our car break-ins, but we want tighter data, and this, these are some of the systems that we just put in place in order to be able to actually have tight numbers on, specific, specifically retail theft. So next year, we'll have a better benchmark as this data starts to be collected. I think the following year, we'll have a true comparison on where we really are. But uh, in the meantime, you, you know, a lot of it is the eye test. Look, if you, if you are out shopping or doing what you do in this city and you're seeing these things occur, we want you to see less of it. We don't want you to see it at all, but we want you to see less of it. And uh, so some of it really amounts to that. You know, the statistics say what they say. And we know that there's an underreporting and people remind, of us, uh, remind us of that all the time. But we need a solid base of data to compare. And the way that usually works is we compare year to year. So as we collect better data, as time goes on, we'll see what the trends show. And we, we, we're going to work toward a decrease. And Lieutenant Ryan, this might be a question for you or Chief Scott. Um, just shop owners that I've spoken to over the summer, one thing I've heard um, from people on Fillmore Street, for example, and they told me that they heard this from their beat cops in the area, was that thefts were actually using drones to surveil shopping districts so they knew when patrol officers were or weren't in the area. And they said that they've heard this from beat cops in their district. So, Curious if you know anything about this, if there's a reality to that situation, that these theft rings are, are that high tech and organized? Well, I'll, I'll ask Lieutenant Rice to get to that. I will tell you this, you know, anytime we put a, t a strategy in place, uh, people try to get around it. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's happening. We have to be unpredictable as we can be, you know, in terms of our deployment. Uh, but at the same time, we want people to know that we're going to be in these locations. That's what presence and deterrence is all about. So the whole thought process is if they see a uniformed San Francisco police officer at a store, around a store, on foot, our foot beats, we hope that that serves as a deterrence to go somewhere else if, if you're going to try to commit a crime. So I'll let uh, ask Lieutenant Ryan to speak on the, on the drone question because I'm not sure that... I did hear that one isolated incident, but I mean, what I think that shows is that there, there are organized groups, though, that are going to try and do what they can. But I think that means that we're doing our job, if they're going to go to the lengths that you're talking about right there. But uh, that is an isolated incident, I, I recall from quite a while ago. Um, but um, if that's what we're going to do, then we're going to get better and, and we're going to be just as sophisticated. And then just clarity, the two to six, the increase from two to six investigators, are those detective investigators or are those actually officers on patrol who no. are these four people? That... Sorry, yeah, those are investigators, those are sergeants. And um, look, we're gonna do what we need to do. This, here's the bottom line. Um, we're, we're, if we have to make additional adjustments, we will. This is something that we gotta make better. And you know, we'll start with six and we'll see where that goes. You know, we have over 2,000 employees in this department and it's not a bottomless, to five officers, but we're going to do what we need to do to make this situation better. Um, we're going to rise to the occasion. We have to. Chief Scott, was there a tipping point with one incident that just pushed it over the ledge and said, we got to do something about this? Well, there's a couple of things, you know, and these things have been happening, and some of this is not new, but we're, we're, we're trying to come out of a global pandemic, unlike anything that we've seen. And, you know, the mayor's direction has been clear as far as that as well, and, and we all as department heads you know, buy into this and agree with it. This pandemic has put us in a different place on several fronts. You know, we, we've seen violent crime go up across the nation. Uh, we, we've seen things that we weren't seeing before. I mean, we, we've had these roving bands of, of, of car caravans that are going into retail establishments and just taking over and, and, and looting. I mean, we, we weren't seeing these things before. So we have to make adjustments as we come out of this pandemic in this city, and the direction has been clear for the mayor, is be ready to reopen this city where people who come here, who live here, have good experiences. And the retail theft thing kind of came ahead. You know, a year ago, we, were talk this, we had looting in the city, and that didn't stand. We got it under control pretty quickly here in San Francisco, you know, thanks to the resources that you know, we were able to get from the mayor's leadership. We only had one day of looting, but we had a lot more incidents that weren't big organized, you know, looting type of incidents that took us all summer really to manage and to, to arrest people and, and hold them to account. We arrested, you know, 
I think several hundred people, correct me if I'm wrong, just for that. So it put people in a different headspace and we're not out of this pandemic yet. You know, people are hurting people there and I'm not making any excuses. It's wrong to steal, but we're dealing with dynamics that we have not had to deal before. And they, and a lot of these lines are blurred. So we have to be ready to adjust. And it's not one incident. I think it's a combination of many things, but the bottom line is we have to adjust to it. We have to do what we need to do to make the situation better. And you mentioned a lot of these crimes are underreported. Uh, why do you think that's the case? I think there's several reasons for it. You know, some of the retailers have a threshold, a monetary threshold, and some of them have corporate policies that hey, if we can get our property back, we're not gonna bother the police department. You know, you stop somebody at the door, they got, they, they have an $800 handbag, we, we take our handbag back, and we're not gonna bother calling the police department. We'll let that person go, we'll, we'll give them a trespassing order not to come in our store, and you know, we have our own security. And so it's a, it's a combination of things, but the bottom line is we need to know about that person that stole that $800 purse that you stopped at the door and got your purse back, because they're probably gonna go down the street and try the next business, so we need to know about that. And we're asking people to report that. The other thing is there's probably some apathy for people who just don't think it's gonna make a difference. You know, these, these crimes sometimes aren't easy to solve and sometimes people give up, you know, and that's why we need to promote hope so people are encouraged to report to us and they need to know that we're gonna take action. And I hope what you're hearing here encourages people that we're serious about this and that's why these extra investigators are, or, or additional investigators are put into place so we have better outcomes for people so they don't get discouraged. Chief Scott, um, Chief, some of that apathy may come from <coughs> the idea that people feel that this is not going to be resolved, right? I think that you talked about public perception of all of this. There's this, again, perception that they're just gonna be cycled through the system over and over again. It's the same people who are cycling again. What can you do to try to change that perception and what are you gonna do with the DA's office to try to make sure that you're getting the outcomes that you need to make a, an effective change in the city? Well, thank you, Christian, for that question. I think it's a bigger issue than that. Uh, people also have to realize kind of what our voters have voted for. And I'm not gonna stand up here as chief of police and, and criticize anything except for look inwardly and say, we have to do a better job because we have to arrest and give the district attorney and the prosecutors and the, and the, and the courts the best evidence we can give them. Now, the reality is this, you know, the laws have changed. And, you know, we're re while we're doing all this, we're also re-envisioning the criminal justice system. You know, there's a concerted effort not to have, you know, people sit in jail for 30 years for a petty theft. And that's not a bad thing, but we have to adjust to it. So part of, I think, trying to promote confidence in our criminal justice system is doing what we try to do in this police department and tell people that we're trying to work with the system we have, with the prosecutors that we have, and make things better. And we are committed to doing that. And I, and I can't speak for the district attorney, but I can say we bring him a case and his people a case and we and they will prosecute it. You know, we don't always get the outcomes we want. Sometimes we ask for people to be detained and they get released. Uh, sometimes they're detained. But the bottom line is we have to do what we need to do. And you know, part of what I think needs to stop is we need to stop doing this and do this and just try to get better at what we can control. And if everybody does that, we're gonna be in a better place. The increase in reports of these crimes. I think you mentioned it's going to be implemented in three weeks, the new system. So, what does that mean for how soon we'll see that? Yeah, so if I can, I ask because De Deputy Chief Azar has really been on top of this. We, about three weeks, we should start seeing this, and hey, hopefully, immediately, people will start reporting. But, David, you want to speak a little bit on that? Yeah, I'll just uh, briefly mention that uh, with regard to reporting, our teleserp unit is open now. That's staffed by uh, department personnel, we figure calling the police, calling the phone and having the, the report prepared over the phone will be much more efficient for the retailers and it'll be much more efficient for us. That system's in place now. In terms of three weeks from now, we'll have our current cop logic system where you can go online and write a report now. You can do that now. The difference is, is that you can't put suspect information into that. And so we're gonna make that change so that the retailers 
can actually give us as much information as possible uh, so that we can get that information. Again, much easier way for retailers, merchants, and others to report crime makes it much more efficient for us. Uh, this might be a uh, question for you, Chief Scott, or you may agree. Um, does this have anything to do with Supervisor Office of Buys' request that you and District Attorney Chase Abu-Dean provide more information about retail theft? Well, Supervisor Safai is trying to help, and he's doing what he can to try to bring people together to help this situation. I mean, this is a part of that conversation, not because of it. The direction clearly was, you know, from, from the mayor in terms of you know, making sure that we pulled all this work together. But what Supervisor Safai is doing is trying to add value to this process by, you know, helping bring us together and talk through these issues and, you know, hopefully providing the resources we need to actually do something. Look, this has to come with resources. And the mayor mentioned it, I'll reemphasize it because this is really important. And we can say all we want to say about the plans, but if we don't have the people to do it and the resources to do it, it it's not going to work. So we have to commit the resources to this. Were these folks already pulled from another department, or were they new hires to SSPD? No, they're, they're seasoned investigators. So they, but does that mean they're off some other? Yeah, yeah, we had to pull them off some. I mean, we have to make adjustments, and that's the trade-off, you know. Uh, we have to make adjustments. That's a part of policing. That's a part of police management. And, you know, different trends will happen, and we have to adjust to it. So um, that's, that's just a part of what we have to do. OK, one more question, one more question. Chief Scott, on a bit of an unrelated note, about a month ago, a couple of your employees uh, in the police department received a letter from HR uh, recommending suspension if they re continue to refuse reporting their uh, vaccination status. Where does that stand? Has anyone been suspended, or are you moving to suspend any employees? Um, we only had eight employees who fell in that category, and we intend to follow through on what was said, but there is a due process. Like any disciplinary matter, our, our members have due process. That means they can appeal, and their appeals will be heard if they choose to do so. But we fully intend to, to follow through on what we said we were going to do. I mean, we're in a global pandemic where over 600,000 people have lost their lives. We all have to do our part. And again, you know, our leadership, the mayor, has been very clear on what she wants to see from all of her departments to make this situation better. So, yeah, we'll follow through. But they have, they do have due due process. That means you are moving to suspend these eight employees. Yeah, the notice of discipline has, has been issued for those employees, and you know they'll go through their processes, and then we'll see where that lands. But we're going to follow our due process to be fair about this and. Uh, continue to do what we have to do to try to get help us do our part to help us get out of this this pandemic. So, thank you all. Thank you very much.